Hey, welcome back to Dutch Shepherds. My name is Jerome. This is episode number three on the carbs and ignition on the Honda CX500 Daily Rider. This video will start where video number two stopped. So it is about late September 2022 when we start again right after this. This video will stop end somewhere about December 2022. It is carbs and I will get another problem as well. Um, and the reason I want to show you all this is because it's been like four months, all this car problems and ignition problems. And I just want to show you how much um, time it actually takes uh, when you're learning this and uh, the ups and downs you get and the, well, the struggle you're in. Um, all things will end correctly and right, but until that time, watch this video. Thanks for subscribing if you haven't already and um, enjoy the video. Okay, so I've got like nearly a CO2 uh, asphyxiation here, but <laughs> I've got my fan going over there, which is actually uh, the suction unit of a uh, kitchen, which you got for nothing and it works really well. But anyway, so I've been running the engine. Um, Good thing is, temperature's going. The temperature gauge is going up, so it's it's responding. And I also could hear the uh, fan going. So I think basically, but cooling-wise, pretty good. There is, however, one issue that when it starts idling, like below 2,500 RPMs, the engine just dies. So I think uh, the idle jet, the slow jet, is giving me a problem. So either um, something I'm missing, or the whole fix on the idle jet and the slow jets uh, just isn't working for me. Um, I could also have to adjust, need to adjust the uh, cables on the uh, the cars, which could be a simple fix. Um, yeah, so lots of things to do, but at least the engine's running. I think the coolant is working as well. Starter engine is running, so. Uh, temperature is going up. Main thing is that this uh, rev meter, the tachometer, isn't working properly. So let's look at that. So the engine is running. Hope you can hear me. It's about 1800 RPMs. I'm gonna rev it. see it dropping down slowly so this gauge is stuck somewhere so I'm a few days later and I'm still having problems with the carb it just will not idle at all um, and the first thing I noticed when I took it apart is that this screw here was completely out it was even higher than this same as the, the jet here so that's odd and of course the float height isn't correct, but I knew that. Okay, so I've just opened up the other one and that doesn't help. It's loose in there. So that chivered out. That float does look better than the other one, as you can see. So yeah, mm, this doesn't help. Doesn't look dirty, but somehow it quivered out. So now I'm just going to fiddle with that float in a minute. Have another go at getting that at a better level. Um, because that is too high as you can see. That's it. Nearly 22 mil. Whereas this one is closer to the designated 15. So I've been over adjusting that. So I'm just going to mess with that float. God forgive I make a mistake, but this is this is something.
So I put the car back together. Uh, maybe I should do the floats in a minute. But I'm just going to try and bench sync this. So I've got this welding rod here on this carb and I'm going to see if that makes any difference with that. So it's really tight now. I'm just going to see if that has the same feeling. Still uh, struggling with uh, the idle. It drops down, uh, uh, just it dies out. It runs and then at some point it just dies out. So there's something wrong with the idle. I don't know what it is. Um, can't be blocked or crap because I cleaned it out. So yeah, those carbs are giving me a hard time. But all the other things have been fixed now. All I need to do is the brake, and yeah, then it's good to go. And I forgot to mention, I uh, I took out the spark plugs on both sides and they were really black. So the mixture is too rich apparently, uh, but I don't know if that came from my setup or the one before because I hadn't had them out yet. So I uh, cleaned them out and uh, measured the gap, which is fine. So let's have another go.
that come off. And brakes, they uh, they suck, so I need to really change those. Other than that, feels okay. Let's get it in. So I've done my first uh, test drive on this Honda. Um, still need to do the brakes, and I could feel that they were like uh, mushy and crap, uh, but. They are working, so I think a fluid change will be enough. They're not leaking or anything, so and the levels okay. But yeah, the main attraction is of course the carburetor. Um, it's just not working properly. It's um, it dies out when it idles. I'm beginning to think that that idle screw uh, taking it out wasn't a good idea, but I don't know. I changed the setting on the uh, throttle as well. See if that changes anything. It didn't. And another thing about the carbs is that uh, I don't think the throttle is working properly. Um, uh, the um, the choke, because it doesn't respond to it at all. Um, clean out the spark plugs, they are fine. So, um, yeah, I went up to third gear, and as soon as I throttled down, it completely died on me. Um, it'll start up quite quickly, so I guess that's a good sign, but... Um, the carbs, they're crap, so uh, I think one has to get somebody to look at that because uh, I'm starting to run out of uh, ideas here. We'll take them off, have a look, see if there's anything wrong, maybe blow them out again. Maybe there's some something in there, but I don't think so. They're, they're, they're really clean. So, I don't know. I think uh, maybe I'll get a different set of carbs and have a go with, on those. Um, yeah, so I'm nearly there, but not quite. The carbs say just... <sighs> Alright, but for the first test drive, I think it went okay. It's actually a nice motorcycle to ride. It's really comfortable and, uh, yeah, cool. Alright, onwards and upwards. Okay, so we're like two days later and had a lot of discussions on the internet about my problem. Carbs are of course one of the culprits maybe, but also it may be the spark plugs. Now I have taken them out, I have replaced the cap because that was like completely dried out. Um, but I think the sparking well, but someone mentioned start from the obvious which would be replacing the spark plugs. I did check the spark plugs, they were like completely black, which would indicate a too rich mixture. Uh, but if that was from my trying or from the former owner, because I hadn't taken them out yet, uh, I don't know. So I'm gonna replace the spark plugs, see if that does anything. I have seen that um, the rear, the left carb, sorry, it's a bit dark here. The left carb right now is leaking float, so I probably haven't done the seal properly. So I think I'm gonna have to take out the carb again, seal the float, and or seal the float bowl properly because probably I think the seal's in between. Whatever, you know what I mean. Um, and also I'm gonna take off these calipers and have a look see inside if there's a lot of crud in there. Uh, if not, I'll just put them back together and put in some new. Uh, brake, brake fluid. Okay, so let's uh, try the spark plugs first. So for a Honda CX500, uh, you could use something like this, which is an 18 millimeter wrench pipe screw, which goes deep into the, um, sorry, which goes deep into the cylinder head uh, to take the spark plug out. This was like, I think four euros, something like that. Um, yeah, just get that, have a proper tool to get it out. It just, it always pays up. So 
So this is the new one. And this is the old one. Place spark plugs, got a fuel tank that's full, petcock is clean, tank is clean, carbs are clean, jets are slightly bigger, but everything is clean, slow jets are clean, uh, the vacuum rubbers, they're tight, they look okay. Um, replace spark plugs or spray, replace the caps as well. Um, yeah, let's have another go. Do some choke. Put this on run. Fill the carbs. Let's see. So this episode has been giving me hell um, I'm not really sure what this video is going to be so I'm just going to get started and get stuck into it and just tell you where I'm at. Um, I have been doing small maintenance on this thing which was the basic plan. Um, just basic maintenance, get it up and running and uh, yeah just have fun with it and then sell it so I had some money to work on the other bikes because Nobody's sponsoring me this. This is all uh, financed by me and my family. Uh, I'm not getting any money from anyone apart from a few things I got from NWT and the Kill to Be Shido bills, but that is it. And as you know, uh, stuff like this can get expensive. A little dollars here, a few there, and it adds up quickly because I've got four bikes. That doesn't help. Anyway. This thing was supposed to be a quick turnover uh, and a bit of fun to finally be riding a motorcycle again. So things are different now. <laughs> the main problem is I was working on the carbs, they were giving me hell, the bike was running um, and now I've got no spark. Nothing. Nothing at all. Um, which is crap. Now. I'm, do have to do a big shout out to Marco Becker he has been helping me out like big time uh, we're, we've been mailing back and forth for about two three weeks now uh, he said try this try that do this do that um, we've been struggling about what actual type this bike is is it a GL500 uh, in disguise because sometimes they do that in Germany so he told me so we've been looking at bigger things, smaller things, but I think all the small things like electrical issues, I 
kindly I kind of had those um, everything that needs to be replaced that could be replaced has been replaced um, and basically it's gonna be the alternator which is the problem <laughs> which if you know a CX 500 because I still think it's a CX 500 E type which is a European type um, yeah the alternator is just a trouble I've got no spark no nothing so that means the engine has to come out I have to take out the alternator replace it replace all the gaskets and all the little stuff which is gonna set me back at least at least 200 250 euros which is a big setback number one um, if I get that fixed and I still got a problem with the carbs so I probably need to get some different carbs which is going to set me back another 200 euros um, yeah and I went to um, England a couple of weeks ago and now I've got some troubles with the car rental as well which is going to set me back even more I guess so Money is uh, flying out the window, um, and that is a problem. So, yeah, basically that is this video. Um, I can show you all the things I've done. I've done things uh, like a million times with the car. I've set them upside down and around, and made all sorts of mistakes. Corrected those. Yeah, um, I'm basically stuck <laughs> at this moment. What I did do is buy a motor lift. Uh, which would help me get the engine out easier and uh, less dangerous um, but yeah that's that's where I'm at right now with this one um, and that obviously doesn't help the other projects because this is sucking me dry money wise which I was hoping to use to do the frame on the, uh, the GS450 Mark II which was going to get to the powder coaters but yeah so that's a big disappointment um, and that's why I've been struggling making this video because I can show you stuff but um, if the bike doesn't run there's nothing to watch so there's another problem um, the CX I already got over there is different it's got like a CDI ignition system and stuff like that with like a CDI and a certain type of coils uh, this one doesn't this one has NECs they are different uh, they work the same but the entire setup of the bike is different um, so I can't change parts out which is a bummer I've already like ravaged that one for the carbs um, so I need new carbs for that one as well yeah I think so things are spiraling out of control and the GS450 Mark 1 is, is still not running as well so yeah I'm kind of struggling here and it's gonna be a, a long winter <laughs> Um, and I need to get my finances honed in into one place so I guess um, yeah bear with me on this I'm kind of figuring out where I'm gonna go with it um, but yeah this is part of working on classic bikes as an amateur as a beginner which I am um, maybe I've taken on too much I don't know maybe I've just had some bad luck as well um, but we'll see so I guess until the next video and I do not know what that will be but um, we'll see again thank you for watching um, until the next video again Marco Becker thank you very much for uh, all your help um, yeah that's it bye bye